So my name's uh, David Kelsall, so I'm the president of the ESDR this year. And thank you, you guys for organising a wonderful Future Leaders Symposium. The programme looks excellent. I look forward to seeing you all at dinner tonight, which will be fun. Now, it's my pleasure now to um, introduce uh, Jesper Mayland, who is, who is CEO of the LEO Foundation, to make the announcement of the LEO Foundation Award winner for, for Europe this year. Thank you very much, David. I guess we should uh, change the slide here. Uh, where we go here? There we go. And then like this, yes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As David said, I'm Jesper Meilen, and I'm the CEO of the uh, Leo Foundation. The uh, Leo Foundation is a Danish commercial foundation that uh, supports the best uh, research in skin and skin diseases. And uh, since 2011, we have uh, granted over 70 million euro in philanthropic grants into uh, the area. Uh, and we support uh, the best research worldwide. Today we are gathered for our award ceremony, but I'd like to remind you all that um, in addition to giving awards, we also give grants. And some of you may have discovered a small folder on your chair, and that gives you more information about our grants and how to apply for our grants. Uh, the Leo Foundation Award is a global award of uh, $100,000 that is presented three times a year in three different regions. One time in the Americas, one time in EMEA, that is Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and one time in Asia Pacific. Today we are gathered here at the Future Leaders Symposium to present this year's recipient for the EMEA reward, uh, where we are basically honoring an extraordinary contribution by a young, promising researcher. The winner of this year's award has been selected among many regional applicants. All application has been reviewed and scored by our global uh, review panel that is consisting of representatives from the American SID, the ESDR, the Japanese SID, the Korean SID, and the Taiwanese SID. So you understand that this is a truly uh, global review plan, and this also indicates that we are talking about a global, uh, a global performance from the awardee here. Um, it's an honor, and it's a great privilege for me today to share with you who the winner is. And the winner of this year's 2019 Leo Foundation Award is Dr. Shoba Amanath. Please join me in welcoming Shoba to the scene. I think we have a few things for you here. flowers, and the uh, plate, and maybe we should put it here for a minute. Uh, before I, um, I give the word to you, uh, Shoba, I would like to say a few words about you. You came all the way from the University of Madras with a bachelor. Uh, to pursue your master and uh, later your PhD at the University of Hull in the UK. And today you are a research fellow at the Institute of Cellular Medicine at Newcastle University in the UK. And you have, in addition, established your own laboratory of T-cell regulation. Before I hand the word over to you, I'd like to share with you and the audience just a few of the remarks of our review panel about you. And here are four. Dr. Amanas shows unquestionable evidence of scientific independence, was one. Another, she's made novel and important observations and her research is of high originality. Her publications record, record only seems to be accelerating. Dr. Amanat has made groundbreaking research and shows potential to become a leader in this field. So on behalf of the entire Leo Foundation, I want to congratulate you. And now, over to you. Thank you. So
So uh, the, it's really an honor to accept this award today. And Charlotte and the Leo Foundation requested that I share how I really got interested in science. Um, and so I thought I would briefly share my first ever wow factor in science. And it began with carrots. Um, so my interest in science really began when the plant root system of carrots was explained to me by my mother. I found par uh, plants to be uh, perfectly organized structures and are great, they are a really great inspiration to understanding fundamental processes such as biochemical reactions that occurs in, um, in cells. For instance, the color of a carrot directly is pro uh, directly proportional to its nutrient value. So imagine us running around looking for the reddest carrots in uh, Madras, which is quite a hot country. Um, so this is the reason I pursued a biochemistry degree because I really wanted to understand, um, really wanted to understand how uh, biochemical processes occur within the within cells and how biochemical processes drive cellular function. This wonder was also coupled with the fact that I found immunology as a very extremely difficult subject. And we had no idea how biochemical processes occurred within immune cells. Therefore, the, and, but at the same time, we could use the immune system to kill cancer, which was a real wow factor for me uh, during my undergraduate degree. Therefore, understanding the immune system became a challenge, and I, it resulted in me traveling to the UK to pursue a PhD. In my PhD, what we found was, uh, what I demonstrated was we have immune cells that can attack cancer and kill cancer cells, but it does not work. And this is not just my observation, everybody's seen that. This kind of propelled me into understanding why immune cells don't work. And rather than looking at immune activation as a um, way to cure uh, diseases or to control diseases, I thought, in understanding the immune tolerance pathways of, uh, can better harness the immune system. This led uh, to my training, fundamental training, as an immunologist to the NIH. So again, I travel from the UK to the NIH to pursue fundamental science on immune tolerance. My entire postdoctoral research was inspired by this concept where an ordered immune system moves into chaos. And the program that I've set up at Newcastle University is the uh, red arrow mark there, where we would like to understand the processes that control an, a very healthy immune system and how does those processes are dysregulated in disease. So my first ever um, study was um, the system that we use are T cells, because T cells um, are fundamentally important in driving a multitude of autoimmune diseases and alloimmune diseases. Specifically, uh, my research is focused on a type of T cells called regulatory T cells. Regulatory T cells are cells that can shut down immune responses. And when there is a dysregulation in this balance of T factors versus T regs, lots of different bad things happen. Or at uh, all autoimmunity, alloimmunity, cancer, you can name a number of processes that's uh, defined by this balance. So the question we asked um, initially when I was a postdoc was, what are the checkpoints that control this balance? And what I found was STAT3, a master transcription factor, destroyed Treg function um, in autoimmunity and alloimmunity. So the hypothesis is that there are regulatory networks that can determine T cell balance within the uh, healthy immune system is true. And we can pinpoint to singular checkpoints that can deviate Treg cell function in disease. And having figured that STAT3 can really dysregulate Treg function, the next question I asked was, if the immune system is perturbed due to Treg deficiency, can we discover pathways that can reinforce Treg cell function? 
For th in order to answer this question, we had to first find the microenvironment that will help us determine this. And I wanted to do this in human regulatory T cells in order to find checkpoints that we can use in the human immune system. So we developed this uh, humanized mouse model of cutaneous, cutaneous inflammation. And the reason we developed the cutaneous inflammation is because skin is a very good target to uh, show in real time how much inflammation is occurring within an organism. So we can track this um, inflammation that's occurring, and then we can study the checkpoints that can bring this inflammation down. So in this model, we would use a not skid gamma chain mouse, and we reconstitute it with human monocytes and human Th1 cells. And the mouse develops this really bad um, skin inflammation. And so what we at this point do is treat the mouse with T regulatory cells and understand the immunobiology that can convert these uh, disease-causing T cells into regulatory T cells. And that's what I show there in study one. Um, at the same time, this sort of uh, pursuit on studying T reg immunobiology also results in models that others can use in the translational field so we helped the consortium of bone marrow, uh, stromal cell, uh, therapeutic consortium within the NIH because they wanted to test dosage and number of MSCs that they can use for patients. So the study too shows you that we can actually uh, use this model to study other cellular therapeutics. Going back to what it, does, what it helped us do was identify PD-1, or programmed death one receptor, as a functional molecule that has a very interesting signaling process in T regulatory cells, and it is vital for instilling FOXP3 expression, which is a protein that determines T reg cell function. So using a humanized mouse model, we were the first to identify that PD-1 can regulate t human T regulatory cells and can maintain human T regulatory cell function. At this point, I um, moved to Newcastle University to set up my own group, um, and Newcastle had um, had this program, it advertised a very tailored program for basic scientists to, uh, to uh, pursue fundamental um, immunological questions. And I joined the uh, dermatology department at uh, New Newcastle, uh, and Professor Nick Reynolds is the, um, uh, is the chair at that department. At Newcastle, we discovered a new protein called Asparaginyl endopeptidase. It is an endolysosomal protease, and this protease has been found in dendritic cells. Nobody knew that this protein was present in regulatory cells, and we found this protein in regulatory cells. It's a lysosomal protease, but in regulatory T cells, it is present within the nucleus, and it is associated with the nuclear, with FOXP3, the protein that dictates T reg function. So what we discovered was a lysosomal protease acts as a nuclear protease in Tregs and degrades FOXP3. And this results in the loss of Treg function. However, if PD-1 signaling is activated, so in, within my laboratory, we do not block PD-1, we study PD-1 signaling. So when PD-1 signaling is activated in regulatory T cells, this protein is completely inhibited in all different types of regulatory subsets. And by inhibiting this protein, PD-1 enhances Treg cell function. Finally, I've had this, I have this slide to show how important it is for a young investigator to move into a department that's really supportive. Again, this is a story that we published earlier on, but it was a result of pursuing a fundamental question on Treg biology. 
When we moved our mice from NIH to Newcastle, we wanted to characterize our mice. So we uh, took our PD-1 mouse and we characterized it. So when I arrived at dermatology department, Professor Penny Lovett, a wonderful mentor, uh, had my lab set up, I had my uh, office set up, and all I needed to do was just think about research. So when we characterized our PD-1 mice, what we found to our utter astonishment is that PD-1 acts as a checkpoint in controlling a new type of immune cell called innate lymphoid cells. Group 2 ILCs are implicated in allergy and asthma, so basically they are dysregulated in, uh, in, ectopic, uh, sorry, in atopic dermatitis and in allergy. So yeah, we found that actually PD-1 can control the subset of uh, cells within mice, and, these, uh, and the, re the way PD-1 controls these cells is by controlling their proliferation and their function as shown by the CHI-67 staining over there. So basically we found that uh, we pursued this, um, this story which was completely out of our comfort zone because we had the time to think about the qu research question and to address this research question which is very uh, directly relevant to disease conditions such as atopic dermatitis. We next, uh, we, we also confirmed our observation in humans using our NSG mouse model and found that the uh, mechanism was actually preserved between mouse and humans where PD-1 controlled both group 2 ILC function in mice and in humans. In summary, I would like to uh, conclude by saying PD-1 plays a key role in regulating Tregs in both autoimmune disease and cancer. And of course, the success of PD-1 therapy highlights its important role and its promising future. Here I've shown that PD-1 can regulate, uh, it, does, it has multiple roles. It, PD-1 signaling is important to study in not just CD8 cells, but to really understand how PD-1 signaling modulates the immune system. Um, I'd like to thank a lot of people who've helped me uh, through this journey. Um, I say it takes three countries because it really has taken three countries to develop this research program and to think about how I can contribute towards the field of immune tolerance and towards the field of skin diseases. So, we don't really, we don't usually acknowledge everybody who helps us because we forget or there's quite a lot of people, but, and I call them the invisible helpers. So a lot of people have helped me and supported me through my career. Um, the key people here are Dan Fowler, my postdoctoral mentor at NIH, um, Nick Reynolds, Professor Nick uh, from Newcastle, and Professor Penny and Professor Mark. They really helped uh, us uh, with our uh, uh, grant writing, uh, support, and having all the assays uh, set up for us to just come and pursue our research, and it's been really helpful. And at the bottom are my people in the lab, and Megan is our new recruit who's on the side. And I'd like to thank my funders, uh, Wellcome Trust, MRC, and the Academy of Medical Sciences. Thank you.